Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi. My name is Muhammad Shafi Iqmal bin Zana Abidin. I'm a chemical engineering student from University Technology Patronas. In this video, I'm going to present about my student industrial training or SIT program. I am currently undergoing my SIT program at Diamond Key International Malaysia, Sindiran Berhad. Before I start my presentation, I would like to take the opportunity to express my gratitude to all that involved throughout my internship program, especially to Diamond Key International and to my host company supervisor, Ms. Amira Elias, for the opportunity to undergo my internship in the sales support department. I can confidently say that I would not have grown and learned as much as I did for these past three months without your guidance and support. I am grateful for the experience and I enjoy it to be in this team. Throughout this video, I will explain about my host company which is Diamond Key International as well as their work culture, the tasks and projects that I have been assigned, the knowledge and skills that I have gained throughout my SIT program, and lastly, the conclusion or recommendation of this program. I shall start with the history of Diamond Key International. Diamond Key International, also known as DKI, was originally named as Email Petroleum System Australia. It is a part of Email Limited Group Australia since 1980. The business was moved to Melbourne, Australia from Adelaide, South Australia in 1982. After that, in the year of 1998, Diamond Key International was established after the purchase of Email Petroleum System which are a joint venture that 60% belongs to Shell Australia or Viva Energy and the other 40% belongs to DKI. In the year of 2010, DKI purchased the Shell stake and became a fully independent company. The business operates in Thailand, Malaysia and China which cover Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines and Middle East regionally. DKI manufacturing facilities are located in Melbourne and also Yunyang in China. This is the DKI Malaysia regional office that located in Petaling Jaya. DKI is a pioneer in providing IT and engineering integrated solution, product and services to downstream oil and gas chemical and lubricant industry. These industries is connected to the storage, transfer and distribution of bulk, liquid and gas. For example, as you can see below, there is a logo named Omega 5000. It is one of DKI IT application for terminal automation software. Omega 5000 is designed to permit multiple levels of fallback operation in terminal automation system or known as TAS. Other than that, Below the Omega 5000, it is a DKI latest user interface for hazardous area called FlexLink HMI. HMI stands for Human Machine Interface. This FlexLink HMI is designed for use in truck loading application for bulk petrochemical products. FlexLink HMI provides the display, data entry and identification function. The reason why it is installed in hazardous area is because the interface is safe and suitable for that particular area. Next, I'm going to talk about DKI services. Diamond Key International services available for 24 hours in 365 days. The purpose for this is to help diagnose and resolve site problem to assist remotely and making sure that the operation runs smoothly and get back to the full capacity as soon as possible. DKI expertise has access to a wide scope of knowledge that will assist site to operate back to its normal operation. DKI services consist of spare part management, site survey, site modeling, meter proving, training, and many more. For the second part of this presentation, I'm going to present about the work culture in Diamond Key International. Same as any other company, DKI is dedicated to developing and sustaining health, safety and environmental management system that is sufficient for the size and diversity of its operations. DKI is responsible to provide a learning environment where employees are encouraged to recognize risks 
that place themselves or the customer asset at risk. Other than that, DKI also creates a policy that stated the employee must strictly adhere to healthy work practices by arriving at work properly packed and ready to perform their duties without endangering the customer facility or staff. The drug and alcohol policy was also established to practice HSC environment in the company. As an intern, I often required to ask a question if I have a doubt in doing my task. It is because in DKI, we believe that communication is a key in building successful and working environment. By implementing this work culture, I boosted my communication skills and also my confidence to talk in front of people. I learned that good communication will also aid in the development of trust among colleagues, clients, and other individuals involved in the organization. Lastly, in DKI work culture, we are required to follow standard operating procedure or also known as SOP. The SOP ensures that a complex routine in a workplace is more structural and it can be referred by anyone, regardless of their status, working segment, or durations of the service with the organization. Throughout my SIT program in DKI, I am glad that the SOP is provided for us interns to understand the task that we are assigned to. I believe the SOP should be implemented in all company to help the employee to enhance their working performance. Throughout my SIT program, there are several tasks that has been assigned for me. In my fifth week of undergoing my internship with DKI, I had been assigned to work with DKI project manager, which is Ms. Chang Nen San, for a project named Petronas Dagangan Berhad Cybersecurity, or known as RTOT. This project is a collaboration of DKI and Petronas Dagangan Berhad that involve 12 terminals. Throughout this project, I can confidently say that I have learned a lot of what needs to be done before the project started. For the first task of the project, I had been assigned to develop a cover page for factory acceptance test or known as FAT procedure and also the system architecture drawing. The purpose of this task is to provide a proper documentation for the client and also to the company. Besides Diamond Key International, there are many other companies that involve in PDB cybersecurity project. This is the reason why we need a proper cover page so that it can be used for the ease of finding the documentation. Secondly, I was assigned to do a document transmittal. In this particular task, I learned that document transmittal is a document that is compulsory for any project to have. The reason is because document transmittal is used to keep track of all the documentation that has been sent to the customer. For example, in this project, Diamond Key International are required to send some several documentation such as system architecture, factory acceptance test, SAT, and many more. And in order to keep track of all these documents, document transmittal is used. In case the documentation that has been sent to a client needs to be revised or faulty, document transmittal is used to keep track of the revision number so that we can improvise the documentation to meet the customer expectation. Next, I was assigned to work on the delivery order. Delivery order is the proper documentation that is needed to keep track of all the product that have been delivered to a customer. Below, you can see the example of the delivery order. Lastly, I have been assigned to design a system architecture using Microsoft Visio. For this task, I learned the functionality of system architecture. The system architecture is a drawing that includes the equipment that is a part of the terminal automation system or TAS, including the details of the gantry, type of connection, and positions of the equipment. I also learned how to use Microsoft Visio in this task. For the second task that I've been assigned to work for is called Petronas Dagang Amber Height Workstation Upgrade. In this task, Petronas Dagang Amber Hat is required to upgrade their workstation in order to meet the minimum requirement for DKI software. 
The terminal that are involved in this project are PDB Kerte Fuel Terminal, PDB Melaka Fuel Terminal, PDB Pase Gudang Fuel Terminal, PDB Kuantan Fuel Terminal, PDB Pride Fuel Terminal, PDB Sandakan Fuel Terminal, and the last one is PDB Sepanga Fuel Terminal, which is located in Sabah. In this task, I learned how to make a costing sheet. Costing sheet is the formulated Microsoft Excel that is used to calculate all the prices that is needed in the project to be included in the proposal. I also learned where the price can be found. Most of the time, the price can be found inside DKI storage cloud, which is called Confluence. Other than that, I was also assigned to work on the proposal to be sent to Petronas Dagangan Berhad. For the proposal, I learned that proposal is basically the details for proposed project. In this case, Petronas Dagangan Berhad need to upgrade their workstation. Proposal will provide information such as the price, the reason why the PC needs to upgrade, and also the summary of the project. Throughout my student industrial training with DKI, I can confidently say that I have learned and gained so many skills that are required for me to survive in a working environment. These are some examples of the knowledge and skills that I have gained. Firstly, I learned how to manage a website. I acquired this knowledge by working on the organizations of Confluence. I worked with one of DKI staff, which is Kai, to rearrange the DKI Storage Cloud website to make it more tidy and more user-friendly. I also have updated a few things in the Confluence such as key in the updated price from a vendor and publish the updated system architecture of the terminal in a project. Secondly, I have learned the importance of project proposal and also project costing. For project costing, since it has been formulated in the Microsoft Excel, I have polished my skills in understanding the mechanism of using the Microsoft Excel. With this medium, I learned that every company are required to have a template formulated Excel to ease the process of calculating the equipment, freight charges, and labor rates for a project proposal. After all the price is calculated, the information is then transferred in the project proposal. For proposal, it is used to summarize all the details that is needed for a customer to understand the management of the project. Next, I also developed my skills in using Microsoft Visio by designing a system architecture for a terminal. I learned that system architecture is a drawing that includes the equipment that is a part of terminal automation system tasks, including the details of the gantry, type of connection, and positions of the equipment. In system architecture, there are some details that must be displayed such as the number of loading arm for each bay, location for each equipment that is supplied by DKI, number of bay at the gantry, and more. Lastly, I have polished my skills in designing using Adobe Illustrator. This is because I was assigned to make an organizational chart for Diamond Key International. At first, I was using Microsoft PowerPoint to design the chart. However, the size and the font is not suitable to fit the chart. Therefore, Adobe Illustrator is my only option to design the organization in chart. As a conclusion, I can conclude that I have learned so much throughout my SIT program. I learned about the company, I learned about the core business of the company and also the product and services that is provided by Diamond Key International. For me, I think that student industrial training is a great opportunity for us student to exposing ourselves to the working environment. As for recommendation, I would like to recommend Diamond Key International instead of working at home, we can work in the office occasionally because it will provide us with more information about the company. And also, I would like to request to work more on the chemical engineering related tasks. That's all from me. Thank you.